The Anchorman movies are already hilarious, but the bloopers amp the funny up to 11. From improvised condom names to Ron's sexual fascination with Mrs. Butterworth, these laugh out loud outtakes prove that sometimes the funniest moments don't make the final cut. Diving into a character and delivering hours upon hours of ad libbing is a near impossible feat for many actors. However, Will Ferrell naturally adopted the overly arrogant characteristics of news anchor Ron Burgundy from the moment he put on the three piece suit. Hey everyone! Come and see how good I look! One of the best examples of Ferrell's aptitude for the character occurs when he is left to his own devices. Before the evening news camera rolls, Burgundy often warms up his vocal cords with original tongue twisters or obnoxious screaming. However, the deleted scenes showcase how one of these lines was too silly, even for Ferrell. While repeating a line about the Human Torch being denied a bank loan, Ferrell and the behind-the-scenes crew were doubled over in laughter. Ferrell and the rest of the on-screen performers deserve most of the credit for making the Anchorman movie's monumental comedic achievements. However, director Adam McKay is just as responsible for a significant portion of the hilarity. McKay co-wrote the scripts for both Anchorman movies with Ferrell, and his humor is peppered throughout the stories. However, the director had just as much influence on the improvisational humor as some of the stars. Throughout many of the bloopers and outtakes, McKay can be heard hollering lines and jokes from behind the camera. The best example of McKay's cleverness comes in an Anchorman 2 scene. In the scene, Ferrell is discussing breast implants with co-star Paul Rudd, and cracks that they now use taco meat as a filler. But when McKay suggests Nichols from off-screen, both Rudd and Ferrell have a quick laugh. Of course, even an anchorman of Ron Burgundy's caliber wouldn't be anywhere without a superstar news team. Thankfully, the movie did an outstanding job of filling out the crew behind the Channel 4 News. The diverse group of funny men include David Kegner, Paul Rudd, and Steve Carell. While fans got to know the entire Channel 4 News team well over the course of two films, many deleted scenes helped audiences learn even more about them. Much of the content deleted from the original Anchorman film was collected into the director video counterpart film, Wake Up Ron Burgundy, The Lost Movie. However, the blooper reel for the first Anchorman showcases a collection of unused taglines by the four season stars of San Diego's favorite news. Filmed in the same tone as a short TV commercial, the Channel 4 News crew delivers a quick line that perfectly encapsulates their characters. Burgundy fittingly says, I like a good strong lady and a tasty BLT. Meanwhile, Carell's not so bright weatherman character Brick nails it on the head, saying, When there's weather to report, I report the weather. While the first Anchorman's assortment of comedians helped make the movie a success, Anchorman 2 brought in so many well-known actors that the film struggled to fit them all in. Cleverly, the sequel doubled down on a famous scene from the first movie, where the Channel 4 news team got into a tussle with a rival group of anchors. However, in Anchorman 2, the fight got much bigger, involving news teams from all over the world. Furthermore, each group features some of the biggest names in Hollywood, including Will Smith and Jim Carrey. With so many funny people in one place, shooting the fight scene was understandably a rambunctious occasion. And the Anchorman 2 bloopers do not disappoint in showing off the chaos. One outtake shows how difficult it was for Carrie to remember his Canadian news anchor name. Without, what the hell's my name? The entire event must have been too much for everyone because even comedy veteran Will Smith wound up crying, probably from laughing so hard. Filming a movie as hilarious as Anchorman without laughing sounds like an insurmountable job, so it's no wonder that the majority of the outtakes and bloopers on this list feature someone bursting into laughter. However, a few scenes went off the rails without giggling, most notably a deep conversation Ron Burgundy had with his beloved pet dog Baxter. In a scene from the first movie, Ferrell's character is greeted by his loyal canine after returning home from work. When Burgundy tells Baxter about his love life in an extended outtake, he says, I think it was Aristotle who said, Come, children, let me tell you a tale about ships and whales. In an unforgettable scene from the first Anchorman, Brian Fantana shares his secret to success with women, revealing his off-brand cologne, Sex Panther. So obviously, when it came to making a sequel to Anchorman, the writers wanted to develop a similar scene in hopes of recreating the magic. For Anchorman 2, Fantana's cupboard gets much larger than holding one bottle of cologne. Rather, he has an entire shrine of condoms and lubricants that he shares with the rest of the Channel 4 News team. The scene is a hysterical moment during the finalized film, but the bloopers take it up another notch. Analyzing different condoms, the actors improvise an assortment of lines around their individual purposes. As Veronica Corningstone, Christina Applegate plays the even-tempered professional thrown into the clown show known as Channel 4 News. Burgundy and crew grow to resent the anchor woman stepping into a role beside them, so they hatch a plan to ruin her career. This is showcased when the news team attempts to throw her off by making faces and gestures while she's live on air. But Corningstone remains completely unfazed. 
I'm Veronica Corningstone, and thanks for stopping by, San Diego. However, as easy as Applegate's character made it look in the movie, the actress had a much harder time keeping a straight face. One blooper depicts Applegate giggling as Paul Rudd and David Koechner taunt her while she reads her news report. As weatherman Brig Tamland, Steve Carell quickly became a fan favorite and delivered some of the most quotable lines in the Anchorman movies. I love lamp. Rudd admitted in an interview with GQ that one scene with Carell made him laugh the hardest. The moments in question involved Carell's character eating a wrap for lunch. However, the meal consisted of a used coffee filter wrapped around a cigarette butt and loose change. Aside from Ferrell, the next biggest name on screen in Anchorman was Paul Rudd. In an interview with GQ, Rudd pointed to one particular scene when he struggled to hold it together. It takes place after the Channel 4 news team gets into a street fight with a rival crew from another news channel. Licking their wounds in Ron Burgundy's office, Ferrell delivers the line, I'm proud of you fellas. You all kept your head on a swivel, and that's what you gotta do when you find yourself in a vicious cockfight. The improvised bit proved too much for the veteran Rudd, as he remembers breaking character and laughing. That's not in the script, script or anything, I, and I was like, took me by surprise. Meanwhile, the blooper reel reveals that Ferrell also couldn't help but laugh at his own impromptu joke. David Koechner's performance as Champ Kind rounded out the Fantastic Four of Channel 4, as he uttered some of the crew's most obscene comments. I'm all about having fun, you know, get a couple of cocktails in me, start a fire in someone's kitchen. Surely Koechner enjoyed playing the role, as Champ resembles other characters he has played. However, when it came to returning to do the Anchorman sequel, the actor may have gotten a little too excited. In a scene where Champ Kind embraces his old friend Ron Burgundy, the hug gets awkward and a tad aggressive. The moment is even funnier in the outer takes, as Koechner takes the uncomfortable moment further. Over the course of two movies, there is enough Anchorman to leave everyone's sides hurting from laughter. However, Rudd found one scene so funny that he couldn't even get through it. During an interview with The Ringer, he mentions a scene from the first film where Ferrell says milk was a bad choice, which was nearly ruined by laughter. But it was a joke from Ferrell in the sequel that really took the cake for Rudd. During the scene in question, Burgundy is so depressed from losing everything that he remarks, The other day I pleasured myself to the image of Mrs. Buttersworth. Thankfully, this hilarious moment also made it into the blooper reels. The hilarity continued in the Anchorman 2 scene in which the Channel 4 News team arrived at Burgundy's house to cheer him up. Wrapped in a blanket and suffering from depression, Ferrell's character is completely over the top with his self-deprecation, much to the frustration of his friends. However, for the actors, it was easily one of the most entertaining days of filming. During one outtake from the scene, Burgundy compares his suffering to that of the Elephant Man. He then does an impression of the Elephant Man, which instantly breaks Rudd. Ferrell has spent his entire career surrounded by some of Hollywood's funniest people. The actor famously makes everybody around him break character, while he improvises and takes things to unexpected levels. It is only fair that once on a blue moon, the comedic dynamo loses control and ruins a scene by laughing. However, in Anchorman 2, Ferrell is bested by an actor that you would least suspect to make him laugh, Harrison Ford. In the movie, Ford plays a superstar Anchorman who does not have a soft spot for Burgundy. During one of the film's few serious moments, when Ford's character talks about being responsible for the death of a window washer, Ferrell can't help but burst into laughter. One of the funniest gags from Anchorman 2 involved Champ Kind leaving the news business behind and opening a fried chicken restaurant. The movie explains how Kind faked an accident at work and used the settlement money to open his joint. However, in an effort to save money, Kekner's character explains that he uses bats instead of poultry. Amusingly, Kekner was on top of using his character's situation and improvised many jokes about using other possible meats. One outtake finds Ferrell cracking up after Kekner delivers this line. I figure after it's been in a deep fryer, it's no longer human. Among the best parts of watching the Anchorman movies is catching the never-ending assortment of celebrity cameos. However, two cameos proved perfectly fitting considering Ferrell and McKay shared a long history of collaborating with them on Saturday Night Live. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler seamlessly entered their way into the news team Royal Rumble in Anchorman 2, representing an all-female news crew. Poehler and Fey together in front of a camera equals comedy magic. There are multiple bloopers and outtakes showcasing the non-stop giggling and joking the two women brought to the set. Faye and Paula also improvised many hilarious lines during their short appearance, including this gem. I'll ride your mustache all the way to hell. In a hilarious outtake from Anchorman 2, Ferrell is guilty of blurting out the wrong cast member's name when sharing a scene with Kekner. Ferrell incidentally calls Kekner Brick, which happens to be the first name of Steve Carell's character. Where most actors would take the simple mistake in stride, Kekner hilariously punches Ferrell by telling him, Brick's dead. 
The Anchorman movies are so funny that even when the actors are keeping to the script, they still can't help but laugh. For instance, in Anchorman 2, Rudd's character shares an upcoming expose about the powers and mysteries of the human vagina, which proves to be too much for Feral in an outtake. Amusingly, Rudd does not let up, calling it an explosive piece, which almost puts Feral on the floor. In Anchorman 2, Steve Carell played the Channel 4 weatherman with as much ridiculousness as he did the first time around. Between delivering a eulogy at his own funeral to getting married to the love of his life, Brick also had a far more significant role in the sequel. Brick was a great man. Really? And I will miss him so much. And I will not rest until I find his killer. However, that did not mean that he was not up to his old gags. Sure, Carell's character doesn't eat another coffee filter, but the bloopers show he had just as many struggles chowing down food. For instance, one outtake shows him spitting beer all over himself. A significant challenge that many movie projections face when filming outside of a studio is excessive noise, particularly airplanes and helicopters. Thankfully, when a movie like Anchorman is fully loaded with comedic talent, even an unforeseen obstruction can become a side-splitting joke. Hilariously, when a loud helicopter ruined a scene for Anchorman, Ferrell joked that his personal transport had arrived. Quipping that he has a helicopter to travel him around San Diego is an ongoing joke for Burgundy. The first time audiences met the local Anchorman at the beginning of the first film in 2004, he stepped out of a Channel 4 News chopper. In an additional scene involving Champ Kynes and Orthodox Fried Chicken Restaurant, David Koechner gets beaten by his own joke when Rudd delivers a line that completely catches him off guard. In the outtake, Koechner's character asks his friend to name a meat, to which Fantana replies, Chicken. Out of all the potential answers, Koechner was obviously not expecting that one and instantaneously bursts into laughter. One of the most awkward parts about being an actor or actress must be sharing extremely intimate scenes with a co-star. So we imagine it was almost impossible for Christina Applegate to keep a straight face during her Anchorman bed scene with Ferrell. It's particularly hard to forget the part of the scene in which Burgundy and Applegate's Veronica Corningstone make out. After all, aggressive biting of lips and far too much tongue transformed a standard kissing session into comedy gold for audiences. Of course, Ferrell's goofball antics had Applegate cracking up, as seen in the film's blooper reel. Not many performers can match Carell's level of hilarity. Seven seasons on The Office proved that. It's Michael's God. However, when seeking someone to play opposite Carell for Anchorman 2, McKay knocked it out of the park by hiring Saturday Night Live alum Kristen Wiig. Wiig and Carell delivered an on-screen connection that was perfect and better described as pure awkwardness. What makes their offbeat romance even more entertaining is the fact that much of their time on screen together was completely improvised. The bloopers released for Anchorman 2 are packed to the brim with outtakes featuring Carell and Wig making each other laugh. That said, one scene between the two goes completely off the rails, when Carell tells Wig that his favorite food is pee. Ron Burgundy's turnaround in Anchorman 2 occurs when he realizes that he wants to deliver America the news that they want to hear, like why the USA is the greatest place on earth. Before that, however, Burgundy was in serious trouble of finding his voice while in the national spotlight. The scene between Ferrell and Dylan Baker, who plays Burgundy's boss, is vital to pushing the movie forward, and resulted in one of the movie's greatest bloopers. In the scene, Baker's character gets mad at Burgundy's ideas and finally says, That's not news. Ferrell is supposed to respond with a line about grabbing popcorn and watching the end of the world, but breaks character before he can even get the words out. There is another Anchorman star that does not get enough credit, Burgundy's loyal pet pup, Baxter. Surprisingly, this furry actor was almost the reason the beloved comedy film received a more mature rating than PG-13. Baxter appears in much of the first film, including one particularly memorable scene where he's kicked off a bridge by Jack Black. The dog plays a pivotal role in the plot and in Burgundy's heart. You know how to cut to the core of me, Baxter. However, McKay revealed in the director's commentary that Baxter nearly earned Anchorman an R rating. The pup had a habit of revealing its genitalia, and his parts can be seen throughout the film. Apparently, the Motion Picture Association of America abides by a strict rule, stating that a movie will get an instant R for more than five seconds of close-up images of male genitalia. And that includes animals. So McKay was forced to edit out several shots of the cute, fluffy pup and his overly apparent parts. 